It's Sunday night, and this is The Conjugal Visit on KGFRocks.com. How do you know? We're not even on yet. Yeah, we're on now. <laughs> hey, everybody out there. Welcome to the Conjugal Visit. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, what a wonderful crowd we have. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we get a round of applause every night when we come into the studio and do our show. Guido, how you doing, man? I just want to know if you play that uh, track in your bedroom at night. What track? Uh, this, you know, the applause the sick, track. The applause track? No, I, I play this track when, whenever I, you know, all I got to do is get, get it up and I, and I play this one. It's like sports fans and shit. I play the, you know, the arena cheer, you know. I usually play the Buffalo Bills goal score song. Oh, okay, okay. Or Buffalo Sabres, I mean. Yeah, and then and when I'm done, Connie does this. <laughs> yeah, she laughs. <laughs> and then when we're all done, we do this. No, I think when you're all done, she goes and gets a toy. No, when we're all done, we, we light up a cigarette. <laughs> and then she waits for you to fall asleep like that motherfucker. Oh, no, no. I don't leave her hanging that often. <laughs> often, see you admit it. Though. I oh yeah, I'm not afraid to admit it. I mean, I'm I you know I I'm not a I'm not a a, a porn star. I mean, you know, there comes a time where you know what? I'm really tired. I want to get off and let's go to sleep. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. Sometimes it's just easier to you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then know, they say, they job. always say they always say oh you owe me okay better to owe it to you than cheat you out of it. <laughs> Right, where's five bucks, baby? <laughs> yeah, <Yourself. laughs> right, right. Uh, my ex-wife was terrible. She was terrible, you know. But uh, uh, and 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 I and I would get two aspirin and a glass of water, and put a twenty-dollar bill on her nightstand, mm-hmm. and she she'd say, "What's that for?" Well, that's for uh, the, the aspirin is in case you have a headache. And the twenty dollar bills there to convince you to let me have a little pickle tickle. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, <laughs> so Yeah, uh, well I don't have to, I usually get the money put on my side of the bed. Oh, you're that good. Yeah, usually. You're that good. Yeah. It all depends, you know. Yeah, well yeah, I mean we're all alike. I mean there's just some nights when, you know, we just want to get off, man. Right? It, Hop on the good foot and do the nasty. Yeah, I mean, come on, let's go. Let's go, you know. I mean, what the fuck? What's the longest you uh-huh. went? What's the longest time you went without any sexual interactions? Uh, 37 days. 37 hmm. days. When I was in the Navy, we were out to sea for 37 days. I Mine was it. over 100. Over 100? Yeah. yeah. Why? Because I got caught doing bad things with other peeps, so, you know. Oh, well, it was karma that got you. Mm-hmm. No, I take that back. I take that away. I, the longest, I guess, that I went without sexual intercourse was probably about six months. Right. You know, um, but, um, you know, hey, there's more than one way to choke a chicken. Well, I went for a full 11 and a half years without it, so. 11 and a half years? Yeah, from the time I was born until I was 11 and a half. Oh, I see, I see. You were 11 and a half when you got your first piece of ass? Could she find it? It was over with in like 38 seconds. Well, yeah, that must have been a land record, a land speed oh, yeah. record. Well, I was almost 12 and she was 14, almost 14 maybe, 13, almost. 14, right around there. 
Yeah. You should have gone to prison. She should have gone to prison. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's uh, just because I was 11 doesn't mean I wasn't the size of, you know, a 36-year-old in the waist. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's it. She, yeah. she probably never seen anything bigger than what you had until later on. And then she, oh, that's a real dick there, that, mm-hmm. right? When she finally yeah, got well, some real, yeah. She was quite satisfied because... You know, it was both of our first time, so it wasn't yeah. like uh, we knew what the fuck we were doing, you know. Oh, uh, did you break her hymen? Oh, of course I did. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's, uh, that, isn't that like the holy grail of men? Yeah, you... that's that's the holy grail. I got one. No, you were the first? Uh, I was the first in there, yeah, on one, but that was after it had already been laid. So, you know, it wasn't my first time. It was hers. Oh, normally it's not your first. Actually, I think maybe normally it is your first time because if you were with the yeah. girl when you're uh, both young and never had sex before, I guess that would be most people would have sex with a virgin their first time. Well, yeah. I mean, a lot of people have sex with a virgin. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, their their first time, they're a virgin too, right? I was a virgin. Of course, the, the woman, I mean, she was a full-fledged woman that I had sex with. When I lost my virginity, she had already, you know, she was a pro. She already talking, was, to, talking that the girl that was 13 should go to jail. Yeah. Yeah, she should go to prison. What she about the woman sex- that molested you? Oh, well, I was, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, she should have gone to prison too. <laughs> exactly. I think that's a little worse. She, she should have gone to prison too, yeah. Yeah, they don't yeah. lock up. They didn't lock up the women back then. They just, you know, took it for granted. You know, we fucking do now. But you know, when I was sixteen, I dated a. I think she was twenty four. Yeah. You know, and and I got like high fives and shit. You know, but now, you know, she'd be in prison or whatever. Oh, oh yeah, you two would be separated. You would be. Uh, uh, she would have been chastised in society. She'd have done time. But back yeah. then, I was. I was a fucking. I was the shit, man. You From, were... <laughs> I was the shit. Like fucking friends' fathers would high. Yeah, dude. You know, and it's like now you look at it and you're like, what, were they were they wrong or were is that just how the world was? And and let me say, maybe it was better, more s- simplified. Then I don't know. Well, yeah, I I I think I th- I think it was it was still child molestation. Okay, right. but back then it was the thing to do. Even in as late as the nineties, uh, yeah. f- female teachers were. It was frowned upon, but it wasn't like okay, you're doing twenty years in prison, dude. Well, yeah. what happened was it, it, the rate of them getting caught started getting yeah. tremendous. Yeah. Where they were getting sloppy, where in the years past it was all like, you know, secretive and private, and there was no cell phones to take pictures and do whatever, that's where the downfall is. People, you Are know, use videotaping their, uh, their and, sexual encounters with their fucking teacher. Yeah, and that's not, that's the part that gets you caught. Uh, you know, I'm not condoning it, saying it's good. I'm not. But it, it's like, it's happened forever. Why now is it all such an epidemic? Because here's the thing is, people don't realize it's happened just as much back in the 70s and 80s and 60s as it does now. They're just right. stuck them more or like you said before they just turned a blind eye to it and just said that's just the way it is uh, they're not doing that no more right so there's p- pr- probably many teachers or older people that uh, were uh, pedophiles that never got caught because the times didn't allow it or whatever right well there was no evidence it well, was it's, get... it's, it's pretty simple. Now it's just your the girl's woman's word. And that's sad because if you can't prove that I did it, you, you shouldn't be able to arrest me. Right, right. But it's oh. just her word against yours. But see, yeah. but it, you know, if it happens soon enough after the activity happens, that DNA is a killer, man. DNA, you, you're busted. There's oh, no getting around. Well, right. You got proof that... I did it. Okay. Yeah. But if put off of some girl's word that you know maybe I dumped or or I turned down, then you're stupid. Right. Because 
any girl can say, oh, look, I had sex. Oh, look, her, she's had sex. Her hymen's not busted. Well, that doesn't mean she had it with me. Well, no, but that means, I mean, they're going to, you know, they're going to swab that. And the DNA is going to get you. There's no, no hiding from DNA. Not anymore. I no, mean, not I, at all. They're getting a lot more convictions now because of DNA law. I mean, mm-hmm. if your DNA is in there, buddy, you're going to fucking prison, dude. I don't give a flying fuck if it was consensual or not. If she's under the age of consent, then you're going to prison. You're- oh, you're going to prison if you get caught with DNA, regardless if she gave you consent or not, because there yeah, is no that's such thing as consent. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You're going to prison. But now, wow. if you look at other countries... Uh, the age of uh, consent is lower. Uh, now they're they're actually starting to get away from like those countries that have them real young, like thirteen, fourteen, which I think is ludicrous, anyways. But uh, they're lowering it a lot to like seventeen or sixteen, and and I don't know why, but you know, girls of the teenage age are much more sexual. I'm not saying they're sexually active. Oh my much god! More oh sexual. my god! I'm at the, okay. I'm at the. Um... I met this thing called Arnold Days yesterday. It's a it's a fair for our town, right? They have a, a yearly fucking get together for everybody in town. They have live music and rides and all that fun stuff, right? And all the little girls, fourteen, fifteen years old, are walking around like a fucking hooker, right? Makeup on with the fucking tight shorts and the fucking and the fucking goddamn. I swear to God, man, this chick walked by this girl. Little, I, I'm going to say girl, and I couldn't help but notice. I really uh-huh. couldn't because her dad lets her walk around like that. I'm assuming, uh-huh. uh, or maybe her dad's not around to stop that shit. Because I know if my daughter dressed like that when she was that age, I'd have said, "Oh hell no, you're not going out of the house dressed like that." She's walking around and she's got she's got those tight spandex shorts on, you know, and she's mm-hmm. got a fucking camel toe. <laughs> and I'm going, what the fuck? And Connie saw that, and we looked at each other and said, Jesus Christ, where's her parents at? Well, I see, swear. That's, that's a thing now. It's not like it's... Uh, and then here's how the, the norm, how it goes. Back in the day, when you dressed like that, and, and something happened, like you got raped or molested or whatever, it was, it, it was, it was provocative, you brought it on. Now they're saying that a woman should have the right to wear what she wants, and I agree, you should be able to wear whatever you want. And that men should, you know, not look at it as sexual. Well, sometimes you can't help it when it turns you on. It fucking turns you on. Yeah. You know, and if you're a sick pervert and it turns you on, you're going to do something about it. And not that you shouldn't be able to wear what you want, but you got to, like, take care of it, you know? Right. Right. Yeah, it's um, it's one of those things where... where uh, if they dress like that, it, it, it's a, well, that's no excuse. You right. know that You know fucking better, dude. You fucking know better. You knew. Yeah, but she told me she was 18. She looked like she was 18. She dressed like she was 18. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she behaved like she was 18, and she was of age. Sorry, you're going to prison. Yeah, it's how it happens. Yeah, much better. Much better, by the way. Yeah, yeah, and um, I don't know. Maybe your connection was bad, um, but uh, yeah, I just you know you have to be very, very careful. And of course, I would never, you know, being the age that I am, would never chase after something like that. Yeah. I really wouldn't. Um, I, but it just the the way that they dress today, I they I did they dress like that when we were teenagers. Hell no! I could never even know. I I didn't even know certain girls that I went to school with had boobs until they were older. Yeah, because they didn't wear provocative clothing, and you know, uh, it, it, it's much different. Like the girls nowadays shop at like Victoria's Secrets for clothes, where girls I leave when I went to school went to Kmart. The fuck, you know, <laughs> right <laughs> or, or or something. I mean, now they're shopping at like adult stores and wearing adult clothing and I, I, I'll same thing I'll go to a park or something and see girls that are under the age of 18 having thongs on go put some damn clothes on right I, I mean come on I mean I, I, I mean you would never let your daughter walk around like that right 
I would never let her. I'm not saying they never have because kids may leave the house one way and have a book bag with them and then, you know, end up being a different way. Right. Right. I, it just, uh, yeah. I don't know, man. You just got to be careful these days. I mean, you got to be careful what you said. Now, I've seen, have you ever seen that show where they entrap these guys? Yeah. I, they, I these guys here, man, they, they're freaking out, man. <laughs> yeah, because it's, you know, internet ways actually are getting more time. Like, if you get somebody, an underage person to meet you through the internet, you actually get more time than that if you met them out in the, you know, oh, yeah. just oh, yeah. whatever, whatever. Yeah, Either, say you're stalking or you're. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's underage sodomy. Uh, let's see, you're going to get uh, uh, traveling across state lines to commit a felony. Lot of things that I've read, you know, it's like, and I, again, I'm not sticking up for these men that do this stuff, but right, the, the girls are the ones that go after it sometimes, you know, and again, they could have said no, but. Times are not like they were 25 years ago. It was probably the man always going after the young girl. Now these young girls, a lot of them like older men. That's true. That's very true. I know every time I go to the, you know, uh, preschool, they're all looking at me. No, I'm not just kidding. But, you know, it's like everywhere you go, though, you're going to find a girl scantily dressed. And behaving in a provocative way. No question about it. I mean, they act slutty. We were at breakfast this morning and celebrating our anniversary. Uh, and we happened to meet a friend there. And she was there with us. And there were four girls sitting in. Te- they were teenage girls sitting in the booth next to us. And I know damn well what they were talking about. And I didn't say anything out loud. I kind of kept my mouth shut. Um, but I was, I was this close to getting up and saying, excuse me, cereal, do your parents know what you're up to? But no, I can't do that because they're not my kids, you know? Hey, can, can I get your phone number? Yeah. You guys do that together or yeah. what? Yeah. <laughs> but, but that's, that's how it, that's what I mean is that they, you know, they talk and they do that and they, give people the wrong idea sometimes and I I know you should be able to wear what you want I get that but not everybody is going to adhere to the the rules of not saying or doing anything right. when you dress like that you know and there there's a, there's a big difference between being able to dress like you want and then dressing like a hooker on the corner oh yeah that's for sure you know, and that's there's no call for it. There's no need for it. You know, get get a man with your intelligence and your your uh, humor or whatever. You know, stop relying on just looks and, and especially looking like trash. You're only going to get trash man anyways. Yeah, you're going to end up getting the bad guys anyway. You're not going to end up with someone who's responsible, who's going to take care of you, uh, and is going to take responsibility for his actions. That's mainly what's wrong is people not taking responsibility for what they do, and I and I just think that's fucked up. Um, uh, they, they, people need to start taking responsibility for what they're doing. Um, we're going through the riots again here in St. Louis. They're not uh, the local news teams are not covering these these rallies. Well, that's what th- makes that's what's going to make it die. Yeah, that's what makes it die. When no one's seeing it, it just goes away. It just, for some reason, you know, stop broadcasting this crap and covering it for 24 hours a day. Just stop covering it. And well, it will, it'll, it'll take care of us. Huh? Yeah, we don't need to cover that stuff anymore because they're too busy uh, worrying about what Trump's doing. Yeah. yeah. You know, well, so, no, but... I mean, that's even calmed down lately. Since his reaction to Irma and Harvey, uh, things have quieted down quite a bit. How can you say anything bad about he's out there fucking handing out food and he's, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, I mean, you look like a bunch of fucking hypocrites. Oh. You know, you, uh, you, you bad mouth him about that shit with Harvey and with Irma, the, where, where they had entire armies ready to move in and help these yeah. people uh, when the storm, after the storm passed. Uh, they were ready, dude. They were ready. Oh, yeah. Uh, sure. That was the quickest response to any natural disaster ever, I think. Yeah, I think so, too. And I think he did a fantastic job. 
Uh, and it wasn't just him. It was his team. But still, he organized it. You'd have to know that he's at the top. Yes, and, he is. And he's the, he's the head honcho. And he said, look, I want to look good on this. You guys got to help me out here, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I got. I need these fucking people. I need these people off my back. Be on his case again. They can't help it. They've lost, and they can't stop. Yeah, they can't help it. And, and poor Hillary, and her fucking book. What happened? You lost. Move on. It's and it only it. took it took her less than a year to write the fucking thing. That's what kills me. Took her less than a year to make up excuses on why she lost the fucking election. Oh, you should have an excuse because you lost. You you're, lost. Here's lost. You're dirty. You're crooked. You're evil. And all you think about is money. So well, why would you win? Exactly. Exactly. And he hasn't pay- taken a paycheck yet. Not. Nah, he said he'll do it for free. He's doing it. He is giving his service free of charge. I mean, talk about selfless. I mean, he he doesn't need the money, first of all. He didn't have to run. I think that even he was shocked when he won. Oh, he absolutely. His reaction when uh, he came out to do his acceptance speech was, he was like, didn't know what to do. He was like, oh, my God. You know, it, I it, won? It, it, yeah. What the, and the fuck? <laughs> and the thing that, that makes me laugh is there's definite proof of, uh, you know, hacking the ballots on the Democratic side. And they yeah. still lost. And they still lost. Yeah, they tried to fucking pack the ballot box for them, right. and they still lost. They still that, fucking lost. That's how many people in the America voted for Trump. So it's like, uh, and there's people that are talking out against him that definitely voted for him that are just pretending like they didn't. Yeah. Oh yeah, they, they'll never admit that they voted for him. No, not until he does something like really good and and becomes like one of the best presidents ever. Then they'll say, "Well, you know what? I really did vote for him." You know what? Too fucking bad because if you can't back your guy from the beginning, the beginning, then don't back him at all. That's right. That's absolutely right. No question about it. I mean, they, they you had your chance and you fucking blew it. You had your chance to put that crooked bitch into office and you couldn't pull it off. Yep, you couldn't and, pull it off. She said, "I think, and and I and I think it's a shame because uh, it, it, it's going to be a nice thing and a in a, a historic thing when a woman first becomes president here. But I think she set it back a long time by being a, the candidate that she was. And it's a shame because I'm not against having a woman president. I don't give a shit what you are as long as you're a good person, you know. Right, right. And she's not a good president. person. Oh, right. And I, so I think she's going to." You know, any woman that runs in the next few elections, they're going to be skeptical about. And they should, nobody should be, but she blew it. No, she choked. Yeah. She choked. Yeah. And she had help doing it, though. I'll admit, I think that she had some help losing that election, but she lost it. All that other stuff was just fucking icing on the cake. Oh, All this shit with that, Comey. That helped her lose know. it. Do you honestly think if she would have won that election, she wouldn't have fired fucking Comey? I don't know, maybe. She'd have fired him in the first fucking three months. He brought back the charges against her. Yeah, but that was all, I think, a, a political stunt on both parties. Or on her, her, for her, They, I, I think they were trying to do something different. Like, they're not giving her special treatment. I think that's yeah. why they did that. You know, yeah. everybody thinking we're giving you special treatment. we got to bring these charges back, but we won't make them stick. You know? Right, so, right. But it ultimately was the last straw for the people that were on the fence about voting for her or not. Yeah. When those statements came back, they said, fuck it, I'm going for Trump. Yeah. So there was a lot of people on the wall and on the fence for this election. This is probably the first election in, at least in my lifetime, where there was so many people undecided to the time they got in the booth. Yeah. And they said they pulled the trigger for Trump. Yeah. And, and you know, I was always, uh, I'm not usually very vocal about my political beliefs because it usually starts fights and I don't really want to get in that fight with most people but I was a supporter from him from the moment he was our candidate because I'm a Republican and he's my candidate you know and uh, if I didn't like him I wouldn't have voted for him I'm not saying I voted for him just because he was Republican right there's times I voted for the other person and 
I remember one time I because I didn't like um, Bob Doe. I thought Bob Doe was just retarded. I really did. Right. You know, so vote for him. Uh, I didn't like John McCain, so I didn't vote for him. I fucking hated Mitt Romney, but I voted for him because I didn't like the uh, Obama even more. You know. Right. 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 <laughs> You have to vote in your party. George Washington said that anything but a single party system is going to cause chaos. He said a multiple party system is a, a sure sign for disaster. And I think he was right because people, if you're a Democrat or Republican and you're raised that way, it's like that's all you can be. You can't even listen to the other person. That's right. asinine. Asinine. Yeah. No, I, I, I don't mind listening for, for to both. Um, my first election that I was able to vote was I was voting for, um, I guess I was voting for Ronald Reagan against Jimmy Carter and Carter won the election. Um, yeah, it wasn't, yeah, yeah, it was, it was Ronnie Reagan. Oh, Reagan beat Carter. No, the second time around. Oh, did he beat, did he run against him? No, no, he ran against Gerald Ford, Gerald R. Ford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I voted for Ford my first time, and he yeah. lost to Jimmy Carter. Well, well, that was... Ford, Ford was a weird thing because Ford never got elected to office. Right, you know? right. He and... didn't stand a chance. He did yeah. not. People wanted to change. Yeah. Any crony or buddy of fucking of, of Richard That's Nixon it. was uh, taboo. That's how it, it, as much the American people didn't want him. They voted for Jimmy Carter, who probably wouldn't have won if it, if the uh, if, if Nixon didn't do what he did. I, right. I think Nixon would have got reelected, or, or somebody else would have won. I don't think Carter would have been the guy if the uh, Watergate didn't happen. Right, and, and if 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 Ford hadn't pardoned uh, Nixon. He might have stood a better chance, but no, the, the, the country was in turmoil. The country was in deep shit. It was the end of the Vietnam War. Unemployment was going up. We were in a recession. It was, forget, we forget about the great foreign policy we had with Nixon. We made so much strides and steps yeah. forward with other countries during the Nixon administration. Yeah, but he was insane, dude. He, Maybe one that wasn't insane, and he just got caught doing bad things. All of them have done something bad. Yeah. Oh, he just got caught, and it's a shame that he got caught because of dumbasses that he hired to do the job were just like the Keystone cops. Yeah. You know, they're bumbling idiots, you know. Bumbling idiots, right? <laughs> uh, I want, want to talk about something before I forget, and... I, you know, I didn't realize, and maybe we did talk about it before, but I want to elaborate on it more. Last month, uh, we lost one of the greatest comedic geniuses, in my opinion, of all time, Mr. Jerry Lewis. Yeah. And uh, uh, I was watching some of his stuff today, and I'm like, you know, this guy was really funny. I don't know why, yeah, why he didn't get more accolades from you know, the movie industry or whatever. But then I found out he talked a lot of shit about Hollywood, so that's kind of like he made his own bet. Yeah, well, him and him and uh, Ronald Reagan, when Ronald Reagan was the head of the Actors Guild, uh, him, that was bla- bad blood there, man. There yeah. was bad blood between him and Ronald Reagan uh, for some odd reason, and he had said something that, you know... That really set off Ronnie, and Ronnie said, "You know what? Fuck you, dude. <laughs> you'll, ne- you'll never act in this town again." And he didn't. Well, he was huge in France, though. Yeah, he was big in France, uh, and like they always are. You know, I you'd be surprised who's who's big in Japan, and and they, they ain't where the fuck here in the United States. You know, uh, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised how many actors are out there going, gee, I wish I could do this better, you know. Uh, uh, Jim Carrey, you know, mm-hmm. you never know when he's going to have a successful movie. Yeah. And then uh, he doesn't, and he's not working anymore. Val well, Kilmer. He's, uh, he's not going to be working at all anymore. He's uh, the Illuminati, they say, is got to get him. He said some shit about some things, and all of a sudden his girlfriend got killed. Yeah, uh, He's actually being investigated for that yeah he's being investigated well he's not being investigated he's being sued yeah he is being sued by her parents and her ex-husband of all people right. uh it's a money scam 
uh, he explained it. He said, he said, no, he said, I didn't have anything to do with her suicide. And that's what it was. It was right. a suicide. And uh, she, um, uh, she was fucked up in the head. And she had attempted suicide twice before. Right. So, and wasn't successful. So she, she was uh, uh, a thorn in his side, but he loved her, man. And he kept on he, he trying to save her. And, right. you know, some people you just can't save, man. Some people, no. you know, some people you just can't, it, it, they're going to, they're going to do it. They've set their mind to killing themselves and they're going to do it. And like so many actors and musicians that we've seen in the last couple of years have done. Yeah, uh, and I don't get this right. Why we're having a rash of celebrity suicides. It, it, it It's almost like, you know, I don't want to be a fucking celebrity if this is how it's going to be. Well, I, well, I'm probably never going to be a celebrity. Uh, I think that uh, my 15 minutes of fame has come and went by now. Uh, but uh, these guys are under um, so much stress that's brought on by themselves. Right. And and I think that Robin Williams is, is a great example of that. He brought all that pressure on himself because he wasn't getting lead acting roles in comedies anymore. Mm-hmm. And... Um, uh, his downfall, and I'll tell you right now, was the birdcage. You think so? I think that's one of down- my favorite he, movies by him. He was awesome in that movie. He won an Academy Award, but he was type casted in that movie. But I, and, I don't understand how he could be type casted when well, he's played every role imaginable and done it well. So he played a gay man. So now all of a sudden, well, he's gay. You know, but, uh, you know what? They, you know, they all talk about you know these guys in Hollywood want to talk about oh, give people the freedom to be what they want and uh, free the gays and all that. But in the back rooms, dude, the guys with the money are are talking a different tune. And he wasn't doing leading roles anymore. He wasn't getting the roles. He was getting he was getting up there in age, and he wasn't a box office draw anymore. He really uh, wasn't. I, I think it was more to do with his age than anything else. And his brand of humor was the, the humor that's now is more subdued than it was, you know, during his time, where zany and crazy. And right. I, I, you know, I think you're right <clears throat> where he couldn't get. The, the lead in roles anymore but I don't know man I think there was something else with it he, he's always been a depressed person they said yeah you know yeah he's why. gone through battles with depression for the longest time I mean, he's been he's been battling depression for forever man forever <laughs> uh, uh, and he um, uh, like I said he wasn't getting roles uh, I don't think he was applying for them though yeah I don't you know, know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what happened there, uh, but he he definitely committed suicide. No question about it. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, he hung himself or choked himself out or whatever you want to yeah. call it. Tied a belt around his neck and leaned forward. Uh, and then, but there's so many. Look at the the dude from In Excess a couple years ago hanging himself. You know, uh, Chester Bennington from um, Lincoln Park. Uh, Chris Cornell, uh, it's like, what the hell is going on? Well, I, you know, I, it's just, I think what it is, man, I think what it, it's this fentanyl thing. Mm-hmm. I think it's the narcotics, man. I really do. I think it has something to do with what's in the narcotics. And right. I'm talking about legal narcotics. I think our government is systematically um, changing the prescription for prescriptions. And that's why we have such an epidemic today of heroin abuse. And I think that these guys are overdosing and they're coming close to death and they're feeling the death and they can't get out of it, man. They, yeah. They can't get out of it. I, these suicides are just outrageous. Yeah. Uh, wh- what I, a way to go, man, you know? Well, I, I, I just don't get it because I've had some you know, really troublesome times. And I, you know, people dying in my life and things happen, jobs losing. Oh, so, so many things that were bad that I never had one thought in my mind about ending my life. No, I mean, I'm going to have to be so far on my deathbed that I know it's going to go and I'm ready to give up. Um, then the time will come. Right. You know, but besides, I, I'm not a selfish person, okay? Yeah. And when you yourself 
not only do you harm others, but here's another thing. I have a life insurance policy. If I killed myself, my family wouldn't get it, and I just exactly, my money. exactly. Yeah. And well, now they've another. got now they've got now they've got a provision in most of your policies that say that suicide is is acceptable, and it shouldn't be. It should yeah. not be. Yeah. Because here's the thing. All right, I'm flat broke. My my, we're gonna lose everything, and it's all my fault. I may some. I'm not saying me personally, but I may think twice about let killing myself just so the family can get a, get going on with their life. You know, so I don't think suicide should be a payable fucking uh, insurance thing. I don't. Right. I mean, because it's too easy for somebody to do it. Look at now these celebrities that are doing it. I'm sure. The life insurance policies they had are a hell of a lot better than the ones I got. Right. So now Chris Cornell's wife is going to, you know, not saying that she doesn't deserve money. I'm, I'm not trying to be cold hearted here, but she's going to get whatever is from his insurance policy and then his record sales and whatever. Probably get it where if someone like me wouldn't get it, they would screw me. Right, exactly. My family, I should say, because I wasn't a celebrity or rich. And the, and the reason being is if I, my family complains that the insurance company is not paying out, nobody's going to give a shit. But if, you know, Chris Cornell's family says that they're not paying the benefits out, it's going to be shit storm in the media. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah we, you pretty much nailed it on the head, man. These guys are committing suicide. Because they just don't want to go on anymore. I don't get it. You know, same thing. The first one that I heard about suicide years ago that never understood was, um, oh, God, that's his name. Brad Delp from Boston. One of the greatest singers of all time. Yeah. Beautiful voice. And he kills himself. Well, that's because he was brokenhearted. But write a fucking song. Yeah. He, he was pretty broken hearted, man. If, you know, the thing about love, it sucks. Okay. A poor person broken hearted is worse than a rich person broken hearted, I think. Because here, just hear me out. If I'm rich, I could still go somewhere, like the Bahamas, and still have some one night stands, whatever. But as a poor broken hearted person, you're just going to sit at home. Yeah. And not get back out there, whatever. I, I don't know. I'm just saying that there's more to life than what's going on in your world at that moment. Yeah, that's true. That's true. There's nothing that bad to where you can't get out of it. No. I mean, there's guys that lost everything and they they spend the next 20 years living on the streets, but they don't kill themselves. That's true. That's true. You know, and that was their choice. They did it, whatever, and they're happy with their choice. Uh, Stress is a Bitch, I understand that. I hate stress. Stress to me is the worst thing in the world. Yeah, but you oh, gotta yeah. freaking deal with it. Oh, it's like my. It's like this show. I mean, they, they, people think that oh, we just come on the air, you know? Well, no, no, we don't just come on the air. This is I, like you know. Stress, this, what are we gonna talk? What the fuck are we gonna talk about tonight? Right? That kind of thing. <laughs> And when there's nothing to talk about and you've got dead air time, that's stressful to me, man. <laughs> I know. I love when my favorite thing is when you, you're a loss for words and I just let it go into the. You know, uh, 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 yeah, that's my favorite part of the show. <laughs> now, like, like, like I, I was super stressed years ago when I was a nightclub manager. And, you know, I had three small children, or no, two small children at that time. And, you know, I'm trying to be a, a father and run a big nightclub that I'm out all hours of the night. Dude, I went from black hair in four years to gray hair because of the stress of that place. Right. You, you know, stress can do a lot of damage to your body. Right. Not just your body, your psyche, your mind, too. Now I was, oh yeah, definitely, and at work, when you're at work, it's just crazy. I, the, the stress can be so overwhelming sometimes that I, I I have to get up out of my away from my desk, say, oh what? my god, what the fuck have I done? You know, I'm in this fucking thing. This guy got the wrong parts. You know, right. they're gonna kill me, and then it goes away. 
He goes, well, hey, I go in and I fix it. You know, I go in and say, hey, sorry about that, man. I'll get you the right part right out, man. I'll next day air it, get it to you right now. Sorry about that. I don't know what the fuck happened, even though that motherfucker gave me the wrong part number. Exactly, right. He he gave me a part number, and I said, okay, you want me to order that? Got a PO? Yep, okay, I'll go ahead and order it. You got me the wrong part. Whoa, 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 back up. You gave me the part number, dude. Well, well, everybody's always going to blame it on... That you know. <laughs> me, myself, fuck. I fucked up. I fucked up. I'd call and say, dude, I'm a dumbass. I put the wrong part no, number in. You know, yeah. I mean, it, 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 the store's going to take it back. Yeah, I mean, exactly. You know, I, I think some people just think, well, i got to make them get their fault so I don't get stuck with this. Right. You, you didn't open it, probably, so it's still good. Well, that's true. That's true. You know, I was talking to a, a guy at work, and, and they were all talking about the, the riots that were coming, and the sit-ins, and the and the demonstrations, and the protests, and marching through the malls, and doing all this crazy shit, right? Breaking windows, and throwing rocks and bricks, and full bottles of water at the police, and shit. I never did understand that one. You're throwing a bottle of water at somebody, you know? Why don't you drink it? fill it with rocks and then throw that motherfucker you want to hurt somebody that's how you fucking do it uh but but anyway i don't want to give these guys any ideas um but um uh we were talking about that and i said you guys act like this shit is new right and they all kind of looked at me startled i said i guess you guys didn't come up in the during the vietnam war did you you think this is new Right. There's nothing new to this. You didn't see the protests down in Salma, Alabama. You didn't see the L.A. Watts riots back in 1980. You didn't see that shit. I mean, seriously, you didn't see the one in 1985 where that guy with that poor truck driver got caught up in it and they dragged him out of his truck and they hit him in the head with bricks and shit. Oh, that, oh, that was Rodney King. That was early 90s. Yeah. That was Rodney King, right? Exactly. Yeah. Can't we all just get along? You think this shit is new? Yeah. This is not new. No, not at all. If this has been going on for generations, we are a, uh, we are a, 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 you know, and the thing that bothers me the most, Guido, about this whole thing is, is they think that they are the only ones that's ever been persecuted. Well, well, here's the thing: is black people... lives matter. I agree, man. I agree. Black yeah. lives and and white lives and Jewish lives and Arab lives and everybody's life matters. Yeah. But if it matters so much to yourself, why don't you behave yourself? But here's the real thing: is right now in the world, as far as the governments are concerned, nobody's life matters. Yeah. And that's the thing is, instead of us fighting with each other, black, white, Puerto Rican, whatever the fuck is fighting, right. we need to get, get together and make the governments of the world change for us because that's the problem. They are the propaganda tool. They're the ones that created this fucking race. We haven't had racism like this in years. Well, yeah, yeah not, well, I mean, when... 93, that wasn't very long ago. We've had least, King. Yeah, that's 25 years ago. Well, they, it's still been going on. I mean, they, 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 there are, I, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it, there, there are bad cops out there. Yeah, but there's bad everything out there. But there's also it, a lot of bad criminals out there. Yeah. I, and I don't believe that there's bad cops, every cop is bad. That's like saying every Muslim's a terrorist or something. Right. It's not true. Right. It's not true. And people should stop saying that right now. It's not true. I know a lot of police officers that are law-abiding, by the book, really good people. But here's the thing, is people get pissed off when a cop does their job. That fucking cop gave me a ticket. Well, you broke the fucking law. Yeah, okay? exactly. Exactly. Or the cop let me go. You didn't give a shit that he broke the law right there and let you go because he let you go. Right. You know, he, and it's he may not be so nice the next time. But it's double standards. Like uh, I've let, I've just, had cops let me off the hook when I know damn well I fucked up. You know, I was speeding. I was doing eighty and a sixty. I was doing twenty miles away, and he could have given me a reckless and imprudent. Right. But he didn't. 
He come walking back up to the car. He handed me my license and my insurance cards. He, he said, you need to slow down. Yeah. And I, okay. And that was it. He let me off the hook. And that, that was a $300 ticket, man. <laughs> you know, it all depends. You know, I used to tell my daughter because she's one of these people, if she got pulled over, that, why did he pull me? Oh, you need to tell me what you blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, listen, okay, I know you're watching YouTube videos and that, but that's not always how it works. Sometimes no. you got to be respectful and you'll get more. You'll get more. You get more, you get more flies with honey than you do with right. drinking her. Uh, and, and you get you get what you need by saying yes, sir. Here, yeah, I got it right here. Keep your hands on the steering wheel where right. you can see them. Don't be reaching across into your glove compartment. Right. And, and, you know, you know I, that's I, the best piece of advice that anybody can have for their child that's first starting to drive or whatever. You know, a lot of times these cops are, don't know if you got a gun or you. You know, a lot more people have weapons in, that carry them now. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and especially with the lax gun laws nowadays. I mean, the, the the gun laws are a lot more lax now in most states than they used to be. They used to be a lot stricter, and uh, it's because of civil rights and and you know we had. We, I mean, gun ownership is up. Uh, there are more guns out on the street. They and they're right. The well, police the guys that these guns are not buying guns from fucking companies. No, no, they're, no, they're not yeah. buying guns from. They're, they're buying guns off the street. Exactly. And, and these are the guns that are killing people. Um, and, and and you know, and, and these protesters are pretty lucky, man. I mean, do you remember when the revolt, the attempted revolt, happened in China? What happened yeah. when that happened? In Tiananmen Square. Yep. The, they brought out the fucking tanks, dude. Or what about and, in, in and Ohio. that was the end of that shit, man? <laughs> How about when there was four dead in Ohio, you know, and four dead uh, in Ohio or in Chicago? Yeah, yeah. when you did the riots in Chicago during the uh, what was it, the Democratic Convention? <laughs> oh, those were bad ones. They were those were bad ones and the shit out of protesters. Oh yeah, and, and hosing them down with fucking water and cannons and shit. And beating the fuck out of them with nightsticks, and uh, and they were wearing the fucking gear, man. They were, they weren't even using tear gas. No, we'll just beat the hell out of you. But that's that's what it happens, to be. dude. The last time all this shit happened was in the late '60s, okay? And after these protests, things did regulate and change a little bit, you know. But what happened is for the last 30 years, we've all become complacent in America and stopped. You know, fighting with the country or fighting with the government. It's, eh, I'm happy. Fuck it. Now, shit's getting out of the wall now. So now we're going back to like we were in the 60s. Right, exactly. We need this done. And, you know, civil rights is always going to be an item uh, to where nobody's ever going to be 100% happy with civil rights. No. It's ne- not going to be the way everybody in the country wants it. And it can't be because everybody has a different idea about civil rights and about whatever. So we have to come up, we just got to be basically good human beings. That's it. Fucking forget the color lines. I don't give a shit you're black or white or Chinese or whatever. If you're a dick, you're a dick and I don't want to talk to you. If you're a cool person, again, I don't care what you look like. That's right. And it doesn't matter to me, you know, and I thought that's the way this world was going is, you know, I was raised in the 80s where the color barrier started to disappear a lot more in the 80s. OK, that's true. It, it was not like I had black friends a lot through the 80s and 90s and whatever. And I thought race relations were getting better. And then all of a sudden one day I wake up and it's like Black Lives Matters and all this and people are protesting the national anthem. I'm like, why? Where the fuck did this all come from? It's coming from because Trump won the election. It's bullshit. They're blaming it all on Trump. It's all his fault. He's a racist. Did you know that Donald Trump won an award from the city of New York because his company hired more African Americans than any company in New York? He's not a racist. He's not. He's not he's, a racist. There's no way. I've 
I've known Donald Trump, not personally, of course, since the early 80s, okay? He's a part of New York. I'm from New York. He's a big celebrity in New York before he was a big celebrity across the world. He was involved in WWF wrestling. He was involved in so many things. I never once heard, since I've known about him since the early 80s, him being a racist until he ran for president. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Until he ran for president was the first time anybody said he was a racist. Now, did he say grab her by the pussy? I'm sure he did. And I'm sure he said grab her by the pussy because he's a man. <laughs> he's a man. He's a real man. They got a he's show not- on Canadian TV, man. On Canadian TV, they've got this show called The Red Green Show. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Okay, okay. You know what the pledge is for the Moose Club they have up there? I've seen it before. Yeah, I'm a man. I can change if I have to. I mean, men are men, dude. And yeah. they're going to talk like that, especially in a... He's in an ESPN van, for Christ's sake. Right, and that's the thing. is, I, I have three daughters and a beautiful wife, and I'm very respectful around that. But right. if they ever saw the way I talk around my buddies, they would be like, well, Dad, because that's, yeah. that's what men do. And I don't if any man in the world says they don't talk almost sexist around their buddies, they're a goddamn liar. And they shut are, the fuck up. They're liars. They yeah. really are liars. They really because are liars. Every yep. man does it. And a lot of days, a lot of women do it, too. I I've heard women. I used to be the manager at a nursing home for housekeeping. Mostly all women in my department. I heard them girls talking, and they do the same thing men do. Yep, they sure do. You, if you don't think for one minute that women don't talk, don't talk nasty, right? You know, I know they they say there's probably a lot less of them than a lot less of us because almost probably every one of us do it. Right, and I'm sure there's a lot of women that don't, but there's a lot that do also. That's true. That's true. It, we got. I mean, I know. So I got friends that are girls that are really beautiful and elegant and whatever, but they will make you blush when they start talking. You know, and it's like, oh yeah, that's cool. I like that. Fuck, that oh, doesn't yeah. bother. Me. No, I like a woman who comes right out and says it all the time. My wife tells me to fuck off all the time. You know, and I deserve it. My wife I'll get I'll get I'll get nasty with her, and she'll get nasty right back. She don't pull no punches. You almost have to be like in this situation. I'm I'm a Sicilian German, and she's a Mexican Irish girl, and our (laughs) personalities fucking clash like you wouldn't believe. But that's okay because it works. Yeah, that's true. If every day I said shit to her and yelled and she didn't do nothing back, I'd be bored. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, Do you ever go, like, when you go on a road trip and you're in the car and you're driving along and all you're doing is listening to music and you're not saying two words to each other for the whole drive? You, you can drive 200 miles without saying a word to each other. We do that all the time, yeah. Yeah. Do you feel comfortable when you do it? Absolutely. Yeah. That's what a good marriage is right there. If you can go 200 miles without saying a word to each other and still be comfortable knowing that she's not pissed at you and you're not pissed at her, you're just enjoying the ride. I would and, do that right if watching TV or so. I'll be sitting right next to her. I won't say two yeah, words to her. Uh, she's playing on her video game and I'm watching TV. I'm watching a football game or whatever. Right? I mean, you know, that's the way it is. Oh, boy, the Packers are in trouble. 17-7 Falcons over the Packers. Oh, oh boy. But anyways, we were, we were talking about riots and stuff a few minutes ago. And mm-hmm. and um, there were some pretty big riots back in the day, back in the 60s and the 70s and uh, even the 80s. There, and so this is nothing new. This is nothing new. This is what we have to face, Okay. Uh, that that you know, the less attention you pay to these assholes, the less likely they're going to continue to do it. Yeah, and that's the thing. You got to the media's got to stop uh, you showing know, it. They got to stop showing it twenty four hours a day, seven days a fucking week. 
You know, yeah. there's more important things to life than these people that are going to uh, destroy property and threaten people's lives and injure police officers. There's more important things to do. But back in the day, I can remember my dad sitting on the couch um, during the protests to the Vietnam War, and there were quite a few of them, and uh, he would sit there in front of the TV and literally yell at Walter Cronkite. Yeah. My dad was military. Mm-hmm. He was in the service. Uh, and he was proud of the fact that he did his time. And he would be yelling at the TV, what do you mean it's not a winnable war? And blah, 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 blah. I know better. And I go, dad, take it easy, you know. But that was my dad. That was, yeah, my, well, that's, that was my dad. <laughs> well, he didn't fuck you know around. What? I, I don't agree with going to Vietnam. But I, I don't agree with the way we treat it our soldiers either oh no i don't agree with that either they were just no. doing what they were told they had Absolutely. no choice right they and, no and choice. most of them didn't want to go in the first place that's right that's absolutely right well listen man i'm we're going to take a break here All but right. this is perfect because you know what song i put in at the beginning of the show out of the green Bay. i don't know no no i wouldn't do that to everybody <laughs> no no i put in chicago okay. we can change the world by Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. And look what we were just talking about. Mm. Isn't that cool? Oh, that's like we I, set I, that up. Yeah. I mean, that was really cool. So uh, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back right after this. This is uh, Chicago. We can change the world. Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young, live. KGFrocks.com. This is a song for Matt Daly. <laughs> the world Crosby Stills Nash and Young back in the day of riots and uh, disobedience and potheads and hippies and mm. protesters against the Vietnam War veterans against the v- war in Vietnam uh, just all kinds of crazy stuff went on back then um, same year that that came out um, Bobby Kennedy was assassinated and um, so was Martin Luther King they were both killed that year. You know, one of my favorite songs of all time has both of that those stuff in there. Uh, Dion, Martin, Abraham, and John. Yeah. I, I've always liked that song. I don't know why. I, I think it's a pretty cool tune. Yeah, that's a good song. It's you know, an excellent song. Uh, yeah. And it's cool that it was made by a guy that was famous in the early 50s, had a hit in the late 60s. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, well, for, uh, well, I mean, look at Frank. I mean, for crying out loud, Frank did the same damn thing. Oh, yeah, with Strangers of the Night, yeah. Yeah. He was a hit in the 40s. (laughs) Yeah, he was a hit in the 40s, and Strangers of the Night came out in, what, 65? No, 69. 69, really? That late, huh? It was between 67 and 69. Uh, It was definitely after 65, but yeah, it was uh, later. It was played every every 15 minutes on every fucking AM radio station from fucking sea to shining sea. Uh, Strangers in the Night, man. It was crazy. But it it still is a great tune. I mean, that stuff, let me... Okay, I, we're a rock station. We play rock, whatever. But if let's take the '60s away. Let's go back in the '50s, man. For, like in the '40s, rather. Frank Sinatra was the biggest thing in the world. Oh yeah, he was the, a star. The, he was bigger than Elvis even was at one time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know that's how big he was, and just a dude from Hoboken, New Jersey. You know and. Uh, a lot of them crooners stayed famous, like Dean Martin. Dean was Martin. Famous they were all famous till they died. It was like, wow, how did you guys fucking do that? Yeah. You know? Yeah, I, I mean, there were more than that. I mean, it was uh, the Rat Pack. Mm-hmm. Uh, all them guys, that's how they made their comeback in the 60s when Las Vegas was built. Sure. Is, is when they made their comeback because they were fading before that happened, before they yeah. all joined forces together. And they were the Rat Pack. And yeah, there was no sad. avenue for them. Yeah, there was no basic avenue for them. Um, what what I missed that that shouldn't that should have happened was a Rat Pack album, where they put well, all of them on there and just fucking you know just went crazy. There is you know? some li- live ones out there. Yeah, 
of shows yeah. that they recorded in Vegas. But no, there isn't no like uh, it would be like the Highwayman. Remember the Highwayman for yeah. Chris Christopherson and uh, Waylon yeah. Jennings, Willie yeah. Nelson, Willie and Nelson Johnny and... Cash. Yeah, uh, it would have been like that and the crooner style. You know, that would have been cool. Yeah, that would have been super cool. I mean, you could have had Frank and Dean and all them Sammy guys, Davis. Uh, yep. Sammy Davis, all them guys doing tunes together, and and uh, it would have just gone through the roof. I mean, it would have yeah. been something spectacular. Yeah, oh, absolutely. them guys there were them guys there were dangerous, man. Them guys there, they had their shit and they together. were cool as fuck. And yeah. you know, they made being a celebrity look so cool. Okay, like yeah. the bands in the '60s made being a celebrity look so dangerous. Right. You know, because they were on the drugs, whatever. But those guys in the '40s, they just looked like those are the guys I want to be or hang the fuck around with. You right. know, exactly. And they were. They were just so cool. Even later on in life, Dean Martin was cool till he died. Man, I remember seeing him in the Cannonball Run and him and Sammy Davis Jr. old as fuck, and they still entertained me. Oh yeah, I, I watch YouTube's all the time of Sammy Davis Jr. and uh, Frank Sinatra. I mm-hmm. mean, one of my favorite songs uh, of all time is "Fly Me to the Moon." "Fly Me to the Moon's a great tune. I think if I had to pick a Frank song, though, it's either uh, "All the Way" or um, "Yeah." I just love the way he sings that, and I do. It's "Fly Me to the Moon." I you can't argue with that song. Yeah, I mean, no, that's, you can't. No, that's just. Uh, uh, anytime you hear "Fly Me to the Moon," you just oh, start well, snapping your fingers, and you know it's. Just I, like... I'm gonna I'm gonna tell the story here real quick, if you don't mind, Guido. Go ahead. I, I actually went to see Frank Sinatra in concert. That's all. I wish I would have. That's awesome. He played here at the Fox Theater in St. Louis, and my mom's birthday was coming up, and Ooh. I bought two tickets, and we went on her birthday. It That's was, awesome three days after her birthday and I bought her Frank Sinatra tickets and I said come on get in the car and we went for a ride and we went down to the fabulous Fox Theater um, and uh, we sat there and uh, we, were, we were quite a ways back you know I couldn't afford the good seats up front but not, we were quite a ways back away from the stage I'm sure she didn't care <laughs> and old Frank I mean <laughs> This was when he was, I guess he was, he was over 60 by then. Uh, it was in the 80s. It was while Ronald Reagan was in office. It was before mm-hmm. he passed away. And he come up on stage and he's singing Strangers in the Night. He gets down on one knee at, at right at the edge of the stage. He gets down on one knee and puts his hand out. And he asks his lady in the front row, says, tell me where it hurts, baby. Yeah. And the fucking place went fucking wild, man. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I gotta say, he was one of the greatest entertainers sure. of all time. He was. Of all time. Guys like, uh, even now, like Tom Jones is, a, is an older man. Yeah. And he still gets ladies throwing their panties at him, and young ladies. Yeah, yeah, him and what's his name, um, um, uh, uh, <laughs> uh no, who, no, um, golly, uh, hey, here we go again, I'm forgetting names again. <laughs> Um. Uh, uh, what the hell is his name? Coming to America. Coming to oh Neil Diamond, yeah Neil, Neil Diamond. Diamond. He still yeah. gets the bras up on the fucking stage, dude. Yep. Yeah. 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 So, and what? And and Vandross. L- until L- he yeah Luther Vandross. He he would do. They would do it too. The girls would do throwing shit up on the stage and shit for him. And uh, <laughs> I got to see him in concert as well before he passed away. He's been gone for a little while, but I was working security at his concert, oh. and um, uh, they they were throwing bras up there. <laughs> I had to tell this lady, "Lady, put your bra back on." <laughs> what's, the, what's the like weirdest concert or uh, lamest or one that you never thought you'd be at that you went to? Neil Diamond. Really, I would go to see Neil Diamond. I went to see Neil Diamond, and I I, I got all fucking teary eyed when he when he started singing "Come to America." But that My was the a... concert was Wilson Phillips. Wilson Phillips, yeah, yeah. What was the lamest? What that wasn't really the lamest concert. Oh, Neil Diamond's think. not lame, dude. Neil Diamond looks lame, but he's not. Yeah, well, I mean, for me, he's lame. I mean, I, I, I couldn't see myself going, but they were giving the tickets away, and they offered con- uh, my wife uh, the tickets at work, and she said, I okay, gone. so let's go. My favorite song is fucking Forever in Blue Jeans. 
Money talks, but it yeah, don't stand and thing. it can't walk. I mean, that's <laughs> it was such a great songwriter. And it was Neil Diamond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Neil Diamond's pretty tough. Pretty tough. I, you know, I can't think of a fucking concert that I went to that I didn't really like. I mean, I. I, I Phillips was the one, I, and I actually I shouldn't say I didn't like it. I guess it was Heart. Good. Well, I went Heart? to see Heart. Yeah, back in the eighties. Well, that was Gay Heart. Yeah, that was Gay Heart. I, the dog and the butterfly kind of thing. Yeah, it was like that was like all I want to do is make love to you. That was that yeah. heart. Yeah, that was that heart. And I and I said, I ain't into this at all. Trump Heart. What's that? Trump heart. She was kind of chunky then. Yeah, yeah. She's she was a chunky. She was a sexy female in the seventies, man. Oh yeah, she, they both were. They nice both were. Body. She was thick. She wasn't fat, but she was thick and nice. And then all of a sudden, the eighties came. It was like, did they get a new singer? Yeah, I know. She, 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 like, she weighed five hundred pounds. Uh, fucking she another could one. Survive. Yeah. <laughs> Another female artist, um, I was just thinking of her, um, uh, that guy, uh, Grace Slick, was hot in the 60s, hot in the 70s. She's fucking eight in her 70s. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she doesn't look too bad now. And she tour when she was 53, and somebody said to her, why are you quitting touring at 53? She goes, well, I don't know about you, but when I was younger, I didn't want to go to a rock show and see some old brought up on stage. So, yeah. you know, it's yeah, like rock and roll. I, I would love, I, 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 now, to be honest, I would go see her. I would too. If she went back up on stage again and just, you know, did her thing. But by now, I think she's just, not, she don't, she, there's no interest there. She's done. About, about her. The band that she was in, uh, Grace Slick is an amazing, amazing vocalist. She yeah. has such range and it's powerful. But the band she was in never really showed you that because they were psychedelic, you know. Yeah. And I mean, even when they went to Jefferson Starship, when they were like uh, adult oriented rock, come on, man, they had they came out with miracles and only you can believe. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was she like, went pop. They did no, she didn't leave Jefferson Airplane. Jefferson Airplane left her. Right. If you can believe in, you know, uh, do you believe in magic and and all of these songs that she said, wait a minute. You know, <laughs> we built this city on rock and roll. She hated that song. Yeah, she but the, hated that, that song. That song right there made her more money than any of her other songs. I know, did. but she still fucking hated it. She thought it was bubblegum. She thought it was pop. They had moved away from their... Man, it was total bubblegum pop. Yeah, and she hated that song. That was one of the worst songs, uh, and I don't even like it. I think it's fucking... I think it's if, gay. If you listen to a lot of albums in the 80s of people that were famous in the 60s, they mm -hmm. all try to be pop in the 80s. All of them. Steve Winwood went pop in the 80s. Yeah. Uh, Eric Clapton went pop in the 80s. I mean, yeah. they all yeah, went tears pop. Tears in Heaven. Tears yeah. in Heaven. And yeah, yeah. It's like, why did you guys, you guys are the forefathers of rock and roll, and you're playing fucking this? What the hell happened to you? Yeah, the guys that stayed true, though, the guys that stayed true to the, who they were, like Neil Young and Alice and, Cooper, and they're still going. Stones are the biggest uh, testament the to that. The Rolling Stones, but the Rolling yeah. Stones changed genres when it suit, when they su when it suited them. They would go. To, they went to disco. They've gone to country. They've done it all. But they've never went full pop. Yeah, they've never gone full pop. No, I don't. They went disco, though. They went but, disco. And they went disco on a few songs. If you got the Some Girls album, it's all rock except for a few tunes. Yeah, there's a couple of tunes on there that are popish. And you got a piece of off that album, which is a killer tune. And you got, you know, uh, I forgot what's on there. But, yes, uh, Miss You was definitely disco. Everybody yeah. was doing Look at Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart went from rock and roll to do you think I'm sexy uh, and then totally changed. And then right. you had doing I Was Made for Love and You and 
everybody tried disco because disco was making so much goddamn money, dude. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. It was the shortest lived rock genre there wa- ever was. Was disco. It was made so much money in the short time that it was around. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it was only around for like three or four years and then they were burning the albums. But that, it, the resurgence of it in the late 90s was a big thing too. Like people were. Yeah. Disco crazy and and uh, like Casey and the Sunshine Band were touring again and yeah uh, yeah the were touring again. Oh, and, I saw uh, Casey and the Sunshine Band. I yeah, I got to see them too uh, right here in St. Louis. Yeah, it was awesome. If you actually took away the disco sound of Casey and the Sunshine Band, they'd be a great funk or funk rock band. Yeah, absolutely because great R and B band. We're definitely great songwriters and musicians and they along with the Bee Gees helped push disco over the hump well you know of course that KC is the only one left original in the band right yeah, yeah. but but who gives a kid besides you know probably somebody like me who else knows any other member in the band right it was only KC we went to see him and my wife says oh my god he got fat you know <laughs> I saw the fat dude on stage. I'm looking at him. I'm like, that's not him. Because I, I, I'm like, he's not that dark. He he must grow tanning all the time now. Because in the '70s, he was real light with his longer hair and his skinniness. It's actually I didn't know this until the '90s. He's Hispanic, right? Yeah, I got to keep. I got to stop. I like to. I like to give my mic a blowjob. Oh, well, take it out of your mouth. Here, let me show you what that hole is for. It ain't for your microphone. I'm telling you, it's like I, I have this problem with putting my mouth right on the microphone. I yeah, have. it's so close that you're just blowing it away. It's a good mic. I mean, you could probably lay it on the counter I across the room. used to have the shit mics that I got to be right up on top of. Yeah, exactly. Like mine, the one I've got now, I've got to be right on top of it to sound decent. You know, But you don't have to get so close to your mic. It sounds great now. I mean, you yeah, can probably put the fucking thing over over your head, and I could hear it. That's a good mic. It's a good mic, and it, that's the thing too. Is like that I did my show last <laughs> week, and you know while you're really doing the show, you don't notice it. But I recorded it, and when I played it back, I must have been too close to it because I kept popping all my P's and and T's, and yeah, you know, and like, yeah, exactly. And it was like, damn it, you know. So I have to. I think I might need to buy one of those uh, screens so that I can get close to the screen and not be close to the microphone, yeah. because a lot of people have that problem. Now I've been DJing since 1993, and I always set my mics so that I can be right on top of the mic. You know, dude, I want to go and get me a professional mic and a professional set of headsets. You know, one of them mics that's on a swing arm and shit. You know, that that's you can bring around. You know, yeah, I want to be able to swing it away from me when I'm not talking and then bring it back in when I want to talk, you know, that kind of thing with a screen on the front and then my headphones and shit. I got everything with the screen and I, I got the new headset and the new boom mic. See, if you can see it, they are sexy. Oh, oh, nice. Yeah, that's very nice. Yeah, that's a great mic. Yeah, and and it's uh, I only paid like thirty bucks, twenty bucks for it at Radio Shack. Oh, at Radio Shack, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. they're going out of business, ain't they? They're not going out of business. The lady said that they're they're uh, selling Re-order. all new products, so they're getting rid of everything that they have and then coming out with different stuff. All different stuff. I heard that uh, they're going to be a part of uh, T Mobile's going to buy them. Maybe. I, I, that could be everybody's buying everybody right now. Now is the yeah. time to buy other businesses because a, things like Amazon are killing stores. Right. Uh, around here, we went from like seven or eight Kmarts to two. Oh, really? Yeah, Kmart's dying because they're owned by Sears. And Sears should have never bought them in the first place. Uh, actually... It came out on Sears. What ha- now? What happened yeah. was the Sears lent Kmart money, okay, and then instead of Kmart paying Sears back, they bought them. But, so it, they, they're using the Sears name because it's they say it's a more trusted name. But right. they're they're closing a lot of stores. Like they closed six stores around here, 
And I know they closed a couple of the Sears stores around here too. Right. So what they're doing is, is in, you know, it used to be like there was a Sears in everybody's neighborhood. Yeah. Now, if you want to go to Sears, you got to take a little bit of a drive for some people. Right. But I remember the days, and I'm sure you do too, when you had your own local everything. You had your own local grocer. You had your own local drugstore, hardware store, your own pizzeria. You never knew there was anything else. Right. That's true. That's true. Yeah. You That's know, you true. had your or whatever. You never had to leave your town because it had everything you needed. That's that is very true. You, you had everything right there. I mean, I used to have um, uh, the, um, uh, the the oh, what was it? Um, uh, the convenience store down the street. But mm. before the convenience store, before the Seven Eleven, right? And the Slurpee, there was the confectionery. And the confectionery was down at the corner store. I think we talked about this last week. We're running out of shit to talk about. Uh, um, I remember no confectionery. Yeah, the confectionery, my dad used to be able to write a note and say, please sell my son two packs of Marlboro. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, we did. Remember? Yeah, so. Yeah. 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 But so, I, I mean, here's the thing. Back then, you knew the barber. You knew the fucking guy at the gas station. You knew everybody. You trusted those people because they were your local. They lived there, too. Right. That's most, true. most people might have lived above their store. They lived right above the store. And they'd have those apartments above the store. And they would go down and go to work every freaking day. Well, you trusted them because you knew that was their livelihood. Oh, you yeah. You knew that everybody that worked in that store was most likely part of their family. You know, and I, I miss those days. I mean, I grew up in the 80s at the tail end of that. We still had all of that, but it started disappearing. And I remember, uh, little by little, the hardware store left. All of a sudden, what the fuck's Home Depot? And, you know, then the barber leaves. Oh, my God, what the hell is Supercuts? All of a sudden, all these things, uh, <laughs> like, you know, big store chains started popping up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I remember, like, it was yesterday going into the grocery store, and you had to walk back into the storage room to go take a leak because they didn't have public restrooms. I remember that, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I also remember people walking down the aisles with a cigarette and hanging out of their mouth, smoking while they're grocery shopping. Yeah. I remember going to the doctor's office in the waiting room and people smoking in there. Smoking in the waiting room. Yeah, as you're lighting up. As I'm lighting one up, yeah. It keeps yeah. going out. I don't know what the deal is. It must be them chemicals. Yeah. Suck it in every day. Yeah. Suck it up, bitch. Yeah, suck it up. Yeah, we just they just raise taxes on the cigarettes here in Missouri. They yeah. went up nine cents a pack. <laughs> <laughs> so like ten yeah. cents a pack here. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, I would have quit. I would have definitely quit. When he, if it ever gets to ten dollars here, I'm done. I mean, yeah. if it, you know, I I said that about you know now it's four dollars a pack. Uh, so it broke the four dollar mark. I would yeah. fucking kill to buy cigarettes for four dollars a pack. Yeah, you probably would. You probably kill yourself because you're gonna smoke a lot more. Well, I, but I, oh, I buy the I buy the cheap Indian cigarettes, so I get a carton for twenty bucks. Well, why don't you come and visit me and buy yourself about ten cartons? That'll last you about uh, six months. What? Yeah, buy about ten months. cartons. They're forty they bucks a carton. I can get them for forty dollars a carton. Less than ten weeks. Well, yeah, that's true. That would last ten weeks, if I'm lucky. Yeah, if you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I mix them up sometimes. I get out of breath, masturbate, and I got to take a break. Oh yeah, oh yeah, uh, definitely, definitely. So, how often do you masturbate? Hmm. Ah, fuck! I, three, four times a day. I don't know. Three or four times a day. Yeah. I'd be drained, dude. Yeah. I mean, on your day off, how many times a day typically? <laughs> At least once or twice. You know. Okay, and then how often do you think you might, on an average, how often does the American man have sex with his wife? A the, week. The, the average. See, that's a hard one to gauge because, you know, there's some people that are having it, doing it like every day, and then there's some that do it every couple months. You know, I mean, yeah. 
it's hard to gauge that. But what I think is stupid is when a woman will only give you a blowjob on your birthday or something. You did it on my birthday. What? Why can't you do it every day? Yeah, yeah. Every day is my birthday, bitch. Right. Just you know. Yeah. You know. I. I. I, I don't. I'm, a lot of men just just take it for granted. Yeah. You know, and then after you're in your marriage, a lot of guys, for the first 10 years, they take it for granted that it's a given. They're going to get a, a special treat on their birthday or their anniversary and stuff. And um, uh, I, I'm, I'm here to tell you, after a while, it, it goes away, too. Okay, yeah. I, I promise y'all. I promise y'all. <laughs> it, it does. It, 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 it's, it does. Trust me, it's it goes away. Flying to the moon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fly me to the moon. <laughs> yeah. Get your get your fucking phone out and go to xhamster.com and there you go. Well, the thing that gets me, they don't do it very often, but they seem to enjoy doing it. Oh. Maybe they just don't do it with you that often. Women. I mean, no, women don't always, you know, I think we call it the wrong name, a blowjob. Yeah. It, it makes it sound like it's a fucking chore. Let's say, can I get some fellatio? Can I get a little fellatio? Yeah. Uh, could you maybe, you know, maybe, uh, you know, gargle my cum? I mean, whatever, yeah. you know, something a little bit more nice. Just, just rip your lips over the salami, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but we call it a blow job. It makes it sound like work, man. <laughs> Who wants to work in bed? I mean, seriously. <laughs> maybe that's something we ought to think about. I mean, yeah, for maybe. sure. Maybe I ought to do one more song, and then we'll come back and finish up the show. How's that sound? That sounds I, dandy. That sound dandy? Because I got to cross the board. Jefferson Airplane, 7 Inches of Pleasure, kgfrocks.com. Uh, Miss Grace Slick, Jefferson Airplane. Across the board. Yeah. Right here on the conjugal visit. Yeah. That seemed impro that seemed appropriate. I mean that that, that song there is appropriate for our show. You think I gotta do the whole show like Wolfman Jack? Wolfman Jack, yeah. I don't I don't know if I can, baby. Yeah. Well uh, 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 the Falcons are beating the shit out of the Green Bay Packers and killing my chances, man, of ever becoming a an all-star man, I swear. It just makes yeah. me crazy, man. So Put that was, in your forehead. Yeah, that was that was Grace Slick, and and she was born in 1939. Holy fuck! Yeah, and she's still kicking it. Yeah. Born in Chicago. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's a she's a whole lot different than she. Well, she before. taught me that one pill will make you taller. Yeah, yeah. And, and one pill makes you shorter. Small. Yeah, it makes you small, correct. Yeah. Correct. And uh, sometimes pills do do things like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and you make, you're up above people and shit. Remember when everybody used to use second all? Oh, yeah. Reds? What is second all? Was that like sleeping pill or something? Oh, That's a it? tranquilizer. It was a tranquilizer. tranquilizer. Yeah. Two and alls. We did two and alls and second all. Yeah, and then they had yellow jackets and black beauties. Black for beauty. diet black pills. beauties. Yeah, those were those were diet pills. Uh, that was the speed back then. But then they, we were eating two and alls and Valium and uh, second all, which were Reds and Sopers. Mother's little helpers. Uh, yeah, mother's little helpers are called Sopers, and there was another one that they used back there. Oh, Quaaludes. That was Mother's Little Helper. Yeah, Quaaludes, man. They were everywhere, dude. Yeah. Like, I used yeah. to love that song by, by the uh, Stones, you know, Mother's Little Helper. Just the one song, What a Drag It Is Getting Old. That That's just, yeah, it's true, you know. And it's true. You, you spend your whole life, you know, trying to look your best and whatever, but then all of a sudden, you're old. You're old. <laughs> and it don't matter what you do. You look old. That's, that's true. She's 77. Grace wow. Slick. 77. I'd still do her. She was freaking hot. She was. She, in you, 1967, are you kidding me? She was fucking drop-dead gorgeous. 
the hottest she was that I've ever seen her was in 69 on the stage at Woodstock. At Woodstock, so, yeah, she so, looked great. So about her that day, she probably sang the best she's ever sang in her life too yeah. that day. It, yeah. it was such an iconic performance, and uh, uh, I, that's my favorite performance by Jefferson, whatever, is the you Woodstock know, performance. A couple of weeks ago, I went looking in my archives for that album, that soundtrack, and I never did find it in my in my stuff. Oh. I'm going to have to go get it. I'm going to have to it, go get it, because there's some know, great... I, per- hey, Santana was awesome on that album. Um, Grace Slick was fucking phenomenal. Uh, fuck uh, the Who sounded was, really um, good. What's that? CCR. Oh yeah, CCR was on there. Joe Cocker was on there. CCR wasn't on the album. They well, wait a minute. Were they on the? They weren't either. They weren't on one or the other. They weren't either on the movie or the soundtrack. I can't remember. Who's that? Because the Who. CCR. CCR. Oh, CCR was on the album only. Album only. Okay, that's what I thought, and that sucks because I would have loved. I am such a big CCR fan, and that would have been so cool to see them at Woodstock. Yeah, that would I think been good. John Fogarty to me should get more uh, uh, accolades and more acceptance and acknowledgments than he gets because I, I, he was six or eight number two songs he wrote. Okay, never had that number one, but he wrote more number twos than any other songwriter in the world. Right, and. Their music was great. I mean, it, it was swamp rock, man, at its best. It just, they made their own genre. Yeah, that's true. They did. They and did. They were, awesome. they were awesome to me. And they were one of my favorite bands from the 60s. And I saw John uh, Fogarty a few years back with my wife. It was him and John Mellencamp. And it John Fogarty, being an old dude, rocked yeah. my off, man. Yeah, that's true. They really did. It was um, uh, it was one of those things that back in that time they just they just don't do it like they used to. I mean, they really don't. I mean, they had well, how many artists were at that show? I mean, there I was know. three days. There was one, two, three. Jimi Hendrix, Sha Na Na, Grateful um, Dead. Paul Butterfield Blues Band, Crosby, Stills, so, Nash and Young, Blood, Sweat and Tears, Johnny so, Winter, get, the band, get a bar, Sly and the Family Stone, Sly and the Family Stone. Ten years after, uh, mm-hmm. The Who, Jefferson Airplane, Creed and mm-hmm. Water Revival, Grateful Dead, mm-hmm. Canned Heat. I mean, the, the Country Incredible Joe Sting, the Country Joe and the Fish, John Sebastian, Santana. Mm-hmm. Country Joe McDonald, uh, Quill was there. Uh, they had bands like guys like Tim Harden and Ravi Shankar and Richie Havens. Oh my fucking god! I mean, these were some iconic bands. These were some iconic artists. And there was some bands too that declined, and there's one band that they canceled on. They the Doors they canceled on them. That was yeah. right after Morrison stuck his wee wee out on the stage. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't want any of that shit. Can you imagine what he, uh, how he would have behaved at Woodstock? Oh, come on. But that's, see, Jim Morrison, say what you will, taught everybody how to be a rock star, okay? Right. Because, like, the time when Ed Sullivan told them to change the lyric, and he did it, and they said, you'll never do Ed Sullivan again, he said, that's okay, we already did Ed Sullivan. That's rock and roll. Right. Do you, you, you're a, and fuck everybody else. Well, by the original estimate of the people who showed up for days one and two was over 400,000 people. And Jimi Hendrix performed in front of a somewhat smaller audience of 200,000 people. Because it was over with. He got there so late. Yeah. That... It was at nine, from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. He started the show. And then um, it, it, it was... Um, it was something to see, man. I, I, I would have loved to have been there. Joe Cocker was there. Oh, my God. You know, a thunderstorm no. disrupted the uh, the events for several hours. So the time schedule was all thrown off. And by the time Jimmy got on there, it was and people were leaving. People were on their way home. Did you go? Yeah. How come you, you didn't go? 
How come I didn't go? I was way too young. Uh, I, I'll see, I, see how old would I have been? 1969, I would have been uh, to, to, to see, 57, 67, 10, 11, 12. I would have been 13, maybe. Yeah, that's too young. My yeah. dad was 18 then. I said, why the fuck didn't you go? You know? Yeah, yeah, he, he probably had to work. No, he <laughs> just was lazy. He just didn't want to go. He could have gone. He should have. Maybe you would have had a different mom. Yeah, I, I might have Janis Joplin or something, you know? Yeah, you might have ended up with Janis Joplin or somebody fantastic that was... Um... <laughs> <laughs> like uh, some groupie or something. Yeah, <laughs> I, I wish I was there. I, I I do. I mean, I wasn't even thought of yet. But that, would, I, I just think I was born in the wrong era because I I relate so much more to music of before my time than I do with the music of my time. You know, right? And I I do like a lot of the music from my time, but I. I really love the music from like the fifties and the sixties and the seventies, and it's so much better. I think. Oh yeah. Oh, I agree. I agree. It was. It was so much more entertaining. Mm-hmm. It really was. I mean, you know, and, and if you were tripping, it was totally different. Sure, but that's the thing is like the drugs were different too. Then you know, like you were doing uh, in the sixties, you were doing mind altering drugs. You know. So the you know, the songs that you wrote were different. But then come like the seventies and eighties, people were doing heroin and coke and all this other shit, so the songwriting's were different. But if you look at somebody like Brian Wilson, who arguably was one of the best songwriters of the sixties, and he just went nuts. Mm-hmm. You know, he went nuts. You see, you it, people, just go to YouTube and put in Brian Wilson interviews and you will be like what the hell's wrong with him? And, you know, it's strange, but from, like, 62 to 68, he wrote some of the best songs of the 60s. Right. You know? I mean, freaking Good Vibrations is an amazing song. Yeah. <laughs> I get passionate, you know. Yeah. You want to hang on that mic, man, and hold it right across to your mouth for the shit. <laughs> well, it's like 10 miles away from it. Right. <laughs> I got to get a screen. So, in comparison, between the first Woodstock and what was the latest one? What was? I don't know what the latest one was, but the first one after that was 94, which was nice. But then the fucking 99 one was chaos. Yeah. yeah. That was, uh, that one was, uh. The 94 one was the 25th anniversary, and it was um, bands that were there before most of it, you know, like Santana yeah. and stuff, Joe Cocker. The one in 99 was the 30th anniversary, and it was a whole new thing, all bands of that time. So you had like Lip Biscuit and the Red Hot Chili Peppers and whatever. Right. And there was fires and devastation and all kinds of bullshit. Dying. Out there. That one was not about peace and love. Yeah. yeah, but there'll never be a time like the '60s again. There'll never be a time of the peace love movement. But here's the thing that a lot of people don't understand. Like some young people of today, would be like, "Oh, I wish I was in the '60s, the peace and love." But there was a lot of hatred too. That's where you know all those riots came from too. Right, right, exactly. So, there was a definitely balance of peace, love, and hippies and. That's not all there was in the 60s. True. You know, it was just That's true. You know, peace and love. That was the counterculture youth that tried to do that movement. Yeah. You know, where uh, the youth of today, I don't know what the hell they want. Make everybody equal, but then put everybody above everybody else. And they contradict themselves all the time. Sure, sure. Did you know that uh, Jethro Tull uh, was invited to Woodstock? And uh, Ian Anderson uh, decided, he said, no, I don't want to go because he, he did not like the hippies and other concerns, including inappropriate nudity, heavy drinking, and drug abuse. <laughs> and, you, know, you know what? I, I'm, I was never the biggest Jethro Tull fan, but I will say one thing. Right. Um, what the hell's the name? Aqualung is one yeah. of the greatest albums ever made. Oh, yeah. 
It yeah. really is. And the guitar work on that album it's is phenomenal. fucking phenomenal. And it never happened again on another Jethro Tall album to that extent. I mean, right. Martin... Well, Martin, Benefit it, was a close second. Benefit was, was a close second. second. But I'm not like... Uh, Aqualong was a straight-up rock album, dude. It was yeah. badass. Yeah, it was a good album. It really was. And, and, and then another band that was invited but didn't go was Pokeroll Harem. Okay. Be, because Robin Trower's wife was getting ready to have a baby, so he couldn't make it. Um, Blues Image was invited, but their mm-hmm. percussionist uh, uh, couldn't agree to be there, agreed to appear in the Woodstock Festival. Their manager did not want them to go and said, there's only one road in, and it's going to be raining, and you don't want to be there. The man and, and, it, and here's what everybody's saying right now. Who the fuck is that? Because you didn't go at Woodstock. That's right. Iron Butterfly didn't go. They were going to go, but they got stuck at LaGuardia Airport and couldn't oh, get wow. out. Cool. Yeah, they couldn't get a flight over to the to the uh, venue. Uh, so that was pretty cool, man. I'm reading all kinds of stuff here. Uh, Spirit declined uh, the invitation to play. Let's see. Free was asked, but declined. Um, let's see. Um, Alvin Lee was there. Let's see. Yeah, ten years after. Ten years after, um, there, there was all kinds of different. Uh, Tommy James well, I, and the Shondells declined the invitation. Why the fuck would they decline? That they should have loved to go. They would have loved to go to that. Let's see. Why would they? Let's see. Declined the invitation. Lead singer Tommy James stated later he could have just kicked himself. We were in Hawaii, and my secretary called and said, mm-hmm. "Yeah, listen, there's, there's there's this pig farmer in upstate New York that wants to, to play in a field." That's how it was put to me. So we passed on it. <laughs> <laughs> now that's fucking funny. That is hilarious. <laughs> You know, Tommy James and Shondells, they might not have many hits, but the ones that they do right. are fucking phenomenal, dude. Chris Blue Persuasion and, and uh, Dragon the Line are two great tunes. Yeah, that's true. Crimson and Clover. Even right. the earlier stuff, like I Think We're Alone. Now, you know you like that song. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I Think We're Alone. It's a great song. It really is. Mm-hmm. It's popish, but it's a good song. You it's feel like it. You weren't listening to rock and roll when you were a little kid. You were listening to pop just like everybody else because that's all you had. On that's the all I had. Yeah, that's all I had. But then there were bands like we're talking about now, Moody Blues, uh, you know, and, and they decided being booked. Uh, they were in Paris the same weekend. Chicago. At the, at the time, still known as Chicago Transit Authority, had initially been signed on to play Woodstock. However, they had a contract with concert promoter Bill Graham, which allowed him to move Chicago's concerts at the Fillmore East. Hmm. Um, and they, he rescheduled some of their dates to August 7th, thus forcing the band to back out of the concert. They couldn't do the concert. Yeah, well, that's that's crazy stuff here, man. Led Zeppelin. When you read, let's let's find out, let's find out why Led Zeppelin wasn't going to be there. Led Zeppelin was asked to perform. Their manager Peter Grant stated, "We were asked to do Woodstock and Atlantic were very keen, and so was our U.S. promoter Frank uh, Barcelona." Um, I said no because Woodstock would have just been another band on the bill oh they would have been just another band on the bill however the group did play the Atlantic International Pop Festival on July 5th and they were listed with 22 bands Woodstock Mm -hmm. weekend event performed south anyway yeah they didn't go because management wouldn't let them well they didn't need Woodstock you know yeah and the doors canceled at the last minute of course that's why (laughs) Uh, they turned turned it down because they thought it would be a second class repeat of Monterey Pop Festival, and they didn't want to have nothing to do with that shit. Right. That was that was fucking ugly. No, the yeah. worst one was Alamont. Yeah, yeah, that's true, but that was still a nightmare. Monterey yeah, Pop when they had the um, Hell's Angels come in and do it. Uh, no, that was that was not good. 
Yeah. No, yeah. the Monterey Pop was it was Alamont that was the Hell's Angels. Oh, that's right. That's right. It was, yeah, it it was. was the Stones and uh, I forgot who else, but that's when the the Hell's Angels dude stabbed the the, the guy and everything. Yeah, and, and killed the guy. Yeah. Yeah. That was just a fucking retard setting up that concert, you know. I mean, whoever that, the promoter was for that concert, right. uh, didn't he end up fucking going to jail or something? For I, don't, I don't. He got something to jail, or you know, uh, had to pay restitution or whatever. But that a lot of people claim was the end of the summer of love. That was the end of the love generation when Alamont happened in 1970. So, and they say after that, the whole world changed and it yeah. could be, you know, and it, it was it because of that incident. No, but it was because of all incidents surrounding that time period, you know, the, the 69, 70, 71 were, were different times because Vietnam was ending and, you know, things were changing, you know, right, so right. it, the, some, the love and hippie shit wasn't working no more. True. That is true. You know? It wasn't. It just wasn't. And then even the music had changed. Like you had different stuff coming out now. Now all of a sudden you got Blue Oyster Cult coming out and Black Sabbath and the music changed. It got darker. It got darker. Definitely you know, got darker. You know, I don't yeah. want to teach the world how to sing anymore. Dio I, and you know, right? Yeah, Dio and uh, Hawkwind and sure. uh, uh, bands like um, uh, uh, like you just said, um, uh, Black, Black Sabbath, Sabbath. Yep. and. Uh, uh, just all these spirit. I mean, mm-hmm. they were uh, they were dark, and they, but they started in the '60s and made it into the '70s. Sure, sure. You know, they 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 were also banned. I mean, Black Sabbath started in the '60s actually, but didn't you know? Sweet Leaf didn't hit it till '71, and once okay. that hit, that was it. It was like right, yeah, and then, then other bands like Aerosmith were coming out. Right. I, I you know, it's kind of funny though because after the '60s, bands went a lot of different routes, but a lot of bands in the '70s. Try to emulate the Rolling Stones of the 60s because, you know, like bands like Aerosmith are definitely influenced oh, by the Rolling Stones. Absolutely. You know. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. We know that the, the Rolling Stones were the bad boys of Britain mm-hmm. and um, the America needed theirs too. Right. You know, just like we need our heroes too, we need our bands too. And guys like Alice Cooper came out. And um, uh, 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 what's um, uh, Ario Speedwagon? Ario Speedwagon in the seventies, and Peter Frampton, who was from Britain, uh, but still was an American icon. He he's all straight up American. Um, and then uh, and then and then the bands that were on the other side, like ELO. And stuff like that coming from Great Britain. Um, uh, what was the name of the band that spurred off of the Beatles? Um, uh, wings? Gosh. Yeah, no, not Wings. Well, yeah, there was Wings, and then, uh, well, yeah, there Wings exactly. And okay. John Lennon and the uh, the Yoko Ono band. Uh, they even came out in the early seventies. What was it? The Plastic Ono band. Plastic Ono band. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. So I, I mean, the the change from the sixties to the seventies was harsh. It was. It was but a also, harsh change. But also, the change from the seventies to the eighties was pretty harsh too for a lot of people. Well, yeah, it was. But it took until nineteen eighty three or eighty four for those to really hit. I mean, they, you know, the bands like you know, like we're talking about uh, Nazareth and all of that stuff. Those are eighties bands, right? I mean. Uh, Nazareth, oh, Nazareth is a 70s band. Well, late 70s. I don't know if they were so early 70s. We could always find out. I mean, yeah, go ahead, because Love Bites was like, or Love Hurts was like 75 or something. It, Love Hurts was 75, yeah. That's not late 70s. You better research them because you're wrong. I don't know. I don't know. What was the name of the band again? <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> <laughs> now, if you'd have said like Metallica or you know something like that, yeah, they started in eighty three or eighty two. Yeah, but Nazareth, nah, that's a seventies band. By the eighties, only old people were going to see Nazareth. Right. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't know, dude. You were there. I wasn't. Actually, we were both wrong. 
Nazareth are a Scottish hard rock band formed in 1968. <laughs> and they had several hits in the United Kingdom as well as several in Eastern Europe uh, countries. Let's see. Um, in the early 70s, an established international audience with their 1975 Hair of the Dog. Mm-hmm. It was yeah, Love with... Hurts. Who was, so where was I wrong? Yeah, the band started in 1968. No, no, no. no. I didn't say when they started. I said they were a 70s band. Said... <laughs> Big difference. They got yeah. the international success in 19... What year did I say? 75? Yes. 1975, yeah. You, you and, nailed and... that. Let me tell you something. I am not on Wikipedia like you are right now. <laughs> I'm on Wikipedia. <laughs> Guidoopedia. <laughs> but we should, should just. Uh, I, right. While we got everybody's attention, we should. Uh, I'm going to go over the schedule if you don't mind. I'll go ahead. <clears throat> All right. And the schedule is loaded. So if, if you ever forget what the schedule is, just go to kgfrocks.com and hit the DJ schedule page and you'll be there. And then Mondays, man, tomorrow, Rob Boyer at 8 p.m. with his uh, Metal Enema show. And every other Monday, not this week, but next week, it'll be the King Guido's uh, Blues buffet check that out then we got tuesday is the hot lunch with diamond at noon wednesday's wild bill hills uh with wild wednesdays or wicked wild or it is and then 8 30 joe and jody of podcast rock city and on thursdays i forgot to put him on the calendar this week he cried so he's on there now free rides chemical reaction at 8 p.m and then fridays wild bill at 11 diamond at 9 2 o'clock on Saturday is the repeat of the podcast Rock City from Wednesday. And then Sundays, we got a double shot of the Conjugal Visits at noon. You'll get an old show. And at 9, you'll get the live show. There you go. Wow. That's uh, our, our schedule. schedule. we got a full schedule now, man. Look, every day got, is covered. Every we got every something going on every day. Now, why, yep. wouldn't you, why wouldn't you tune in to KGFrobs.com? we got uh, multiple shows going on every every other monday there's two shows every wednesday and every friday there's two shows right and uh, every sunday there's two cvs shows yep that's true yeah well what what did they have today which one did they get this week today was uh matt thompson of king diamonds band nice that was a good interview yeah that was the show this played today random selection you know yeah that was a great show Excellent. Most excellent. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, next week, I don't know who, what it'll be. You'll have to tune in. That's the cool fun about it is I, I like it this way better because you might hear a guest name and say, eh, I don't know nothing about them. I'm not going to come. But now you might just want to come and check it out, and you're going to get trapped. So clear your schedule for two hours because you're not going to be able to turn away. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. Well, we ought to record that and put it on all over the place, man. Yeah. That was a good good advertisement. Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah. That was the way to go. Well, today I celebrated my 11th anniversary with my dear wife. Awesome. And, uh, I want to say it out loud because I'm proud. And uh, I love her very much. And she's meant a lot to me over the years. And uh, without her, I probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. So uh, she's awesome. She's a great person. And I'm glad I met her. So yeah. all that's good. So that was yeah. nice. You'd be drooling somewhere and, you know. Oh, yeah, I'd be in some corner drinking. Time, and... time for your bath, Mr. K. Yeah, time for your sponge bath, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kohler. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Freeride. Mr. Freeride. <laughs> I said Mr. K and you went and said it, so whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, yeah, um, and, and, and uh, we've got some really good stuff hopefully coming our way in the fall and some – Uh, A few minor changes, maybe, but we're not going to say anything about those yet. October 1st, we are going to have Angus AZDZ, uh, uh, lead guitarist. Uh, It's a tribute band, but uh, it's a guest. And uh, October 1st, Sunday, October 1st, will be our guest. And I'll be doing an event this week and booking him in for that. 
and um, possibly somebody else next weekend. I'm not really sure yet, but look on our Facebook page for any postings of any upcoming shows, okay? Uh, yeah. And you, you go to the event page and check it out, okay? You do that. Yeah, do that. Okay. Well, we're going to get out of here, man. We've beaten this one to death. I think we've done a good job so far. We kept it going. And Absolutely. We had a, had, a, had a good time talking about rock history and uh, Woodstock. Got to hear two great songs from the past. Maybe next week we'll do something from, you know, closer to today. Okay. I've, I've heard that before. If we don't have a guest. Well, you got to tell me what you want to hear, dude. <laughs> I mean, you got to help me out here, man. I, you know, I'm guessing here, dude. All right, I'll send you. If we don't have a guest next week, I'll send you the two Send songs. me two tunes you want me to play. All right. All right? If we don't yeah. have a guest. All right. All right. Well, like I said, we've beaten this one to death. We want to thank you all for listening in. We want to, uh, first of all, apologize to all the bands that went to Woodstock. And we'd also like to apologize to those bands that didn't go to Woodstock. <laughs> and uh, we want to uh, apologize to um, uh, uh, sex offenders because we got started on that early and, uh, and during the show. And then also the protesters. We want to apologize to them real quick. We say, we're sorry. We don't want to hurt your feelings. All right. All right. So now we, we've apologized for all the shit we talked about tonight. Well, thank you all for listening in. This is KGFRocks.com, and this has been The Conjugal Visit. Good night, everyone. Say good night, Guido. Guido. Yeah. Bye. Good... <laughs> <laughs> you fudger. Good night, everybody. See you later. Bye. Later. It's Sunday night, and this is The Conjugal Visit on kgfrocks.com.